Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Night Bible Study at Grow to Grow Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And we'll be teaching tonight part two of our message from last Tuesday, which was Angels, Heaven's FedEx Systems. So let's grab your Bibles, your pens, your markers, and your notebooks and get ready to take some great notes from this powerful message, okay? I'm going to pray and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, just thank you and praise you for your word. Thank you once again for the opportunity to gather around your word. Satan, I break your powers over the message, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessings of God. You cannot hinder them from receiving revelation, knowledge, and spiritual understanding for their spiritual growth and maturity to take them to the next level in life and ministry in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I decrease for your increase, all of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward, manifesting yourself as the teacher through myself, the yielded vestal bringing forth revelation, knowledge, and spiritual understanding for our spiritual growth and maturity to take us all to the next level in life and ministry in Jesus' name. Satan, I break your powers over the message, over the people. You cannot hinder us from receiving the words and the blessings of God. I bind every spirit of distraction, confusion, division, rebellion, rejection, false doctrine, false revelation, and every evil and wicked spirit that would attempt to hinder this message from coming forth in Jesus' name. I release you demon spirits from your assignments over us, loose you in the outer darkness, never to return again in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that will be accomplished and all that will be revealed through the teaching of your word in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right, once again, the title of the message is Angels, Heaven's FedEx System. This is part two. Now, our foundation scripture will be Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 and 14, and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Let's read those scriptures right now. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, it says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? Or are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? Who shall be the heirs of salvation? So angels or ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation, okay? Later on, we're gonna find out who the heirs of salvation are, and we're gonna find out what angels really are, who they really are, let me say it like that. Okay, let's go to our second foundation scripture, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, we drop down to verse 13, it says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So God hasn't forgot about you when you go through your trials, your tests, and your tribulations. God says he's got an answer for you. But that answer must be petitioned to God. It's not automatically going to come. It must be petition petition to God and you must use the angels to go forth and bring the answer to you okay now the purpose of the message we said was to give the believer a clear understanding of the existence of angels and the benefits that they are to the believer we said our goal and objective is that the believer would know how and when to use and dispatch the angels of the Lord when praying okay now Let's look at what an angel is. We said an angel is a messenger sent by God, by man, or by Satan. That's right. Satan will send angels. But those angels are false ministers, false prophets, teaching false doctrine. God needs somebody to teach the truth. Satan needs somebody to teach false doctrine. Okay. Now we said also that an angel is a messenger. Actually, an angel is a pastor. So myself being an assistant pastor, I'm an angel sent to you by God with a message from God. So receive it as a messenger from God. We said an angel is a guardian or once again a representative. An angel also is superior to man, belonging to heaven, belonging to God, and engage in his service. So God uses angels as well as we have access. When Jesus died on the cross, Part of our benefit package is we had access to angels, okay? Now, we says angels are spirits not having material bodies as men. Even though they may look like a man, they don't have the same type of makeup that a man has in his body, material bodies. Now, we said angels are either human in form 
or can assume the human form when necessary. So that needs some scripture to back that up because that sounds kind of deep. So let's go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. And we're going to see an example in the Bible where angels appear as men. Luke 24, let's read verses 3 and 4. It says, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed about this. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Two men. They saw angels as two men. So it wasn't like two giant people with wings that people kind of talk about that. Now let's look at another scripture. Another scripture. Let's look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And in Acts chapter 10, we read, let's look at verse 3 first. Acts chapter 10, verse 3 says, He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying to him, Cornelius. Now let's drop down to verse 30. Drop down to verse 30. It says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Once again, you notice the angel was in the appearance of a man, but they always had divine clothes on. Okay? Now, angels are also considered as holy because God is holy, so his angels would have to be holy. Okay? Now, also, in the Christian dictionary, we have a definition about an angel, and it reads as follows. Listen to this, a spiritual and supernatural being who continually worships and serves God in heaven and who is sent to the world from time to time as his messenger to inform God's people and to comfort and minister to them. It also goes on to say, angels appear to shepherds in the fields announcing the birth of Jesus. That's in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 14. Angels also announced his resurrection, rising from the dead. In Luke 24, 5 and 7, 5 through 7, they announced that Jesus would return again. In Acts chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, they are personal, sinless, immortal beings existing in great numbers and in close relation with individual men and women throughout the history of God's kingdom. And finally, they have great strength intelligence and wisdom far superior to that of human beings. They are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Now, since the angels are sent to those who are going to be heirs of salvation, let's find out who the heirs of salvation are. Now, the heirs of, heirs of salvation are those who are born again. Okay, for time's sake, I'm just going to give you the scripture because I want to get to the new information. Let's look, uh, turn, I mean, write down Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, Galatians 3, 26 to 29, and Colossians 1, 12 through 14. Now, you're going to use these angels in some of your prayers. Every single prayer doesn't need the assistance of angels, but where they do and you don't use the angels, your prayers could be hindered, helped up, or even stopped. Because when length of time begins, begins to show up and you don't get your prayers answered, then you begin to doubt. And the book of James tells us if you doubt, you're going to do without. Because you have to be faithful until the prayer, the uh, whatever you're praying for, manifest. Okay? Now, let's look at here. Completing your prayer request from God. These are steps in praying to God when petitioning for certain things or situations, okay? First of all, you find your situation in God's Word because every concern known to man is in the Word of God. So you have to find it. If you don't find it, call up another brother or sister in Christ and see if they know where it says to help you out, okay? Because the Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron, so I can learn from you and you can learn from me. But we can't be uh, fearful because or think that you're dumb because you don't know where it's at. Because everybody don't go through the same thing. Some people go through this. Some people go through that. So call up a brother and sister. Call the church and find out. They may even tell you where it's at. Okay? So first of all, you find your situation in God's word. 
Secondly, you put God in the remembrance of his word. So when you're praying, for example, you say, Father, you sit in your word. You know, whatever that situation is. For healing, Father, you sit in your word. Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sickness. And with his stripes, we're healed. So you put God in remembrance of his word. Because God is not obligated to respond to your situation, but he's obligated to respond to his word. Okay? You find that in uh, Hebrews 11.6. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is you, the believer, believing, trusting, and having confidence in what God said in his word will come to pass, that you do what it says. But you have to bring God his word. Okay, the third step in praying is you pray to your heavenly father in the name of Jesus, and you don't pray to Jesus. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith, but you don't pray to Jesus. You pray to the father in the name of Jesus, and you end your prayer in Jesus' name. Always end your prayer in Jesus' name, okay? So that's the fourth step in your prayer in Jesus' name. And the fifth step is you loose the angels from heaven to go forth and cause your prayer to come to pass. So if you pray and you forgot to send the angels, that could be what's taking it so long. Because sometimes you get into a, 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 a negative thought situation and you start saying, well, maybe God don't mean for me to have it. But that's incorrect because the Bible said the answers of God are yea and amen, meaning yes and so be it. But if you don't do it right, you miss, made a, make a mistake, you could delay it and even hinder it from coming to pass, okay? So we got to make sure we got each step. Next, after loosening the angels, you begin to thank God for the answer before manifestation of the thing that you prayed for. You have to believe. That's your faith going. It's a faith transaction. You have to believe you have that answer before it even manifests. It. For example, if you're asking God for $1,000, you have to believe you have it before you even see it. You're asking God for a new house, a new car. Believe God for it before you even see it. Okay? It doesn't take God long to move, but you have to give God his word. Believe that you receive the thing that you're praying for. That's what it teaches us in Mark. It says, whatsoever the thing you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. So the first step in your faith walk is believing first. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, then you're doubting. Okay? Now, after thanking God for the answer before it manifests, you continue to do what we call, uh, uh, let's say it like this, we continue your confession of faith until manifestation. You don't let up because if you believe you have it, you keep saying it, saying it, and saying it, and saying it, and then it'll show up, okay? So you have to follow that. Now, I want you, what I want you to do is create a prayer journal. So therefore, when you Pray, say, for example, if you pray for something today, you entitle it May the 24th. You pray this prayer. And when you pray the prayer and you continue co to confess it, and then when it manifests, you write down the date. Okay, this will show you how long it took that prayer to actually manifest. This right here will begin to improve your prayer life. Improve your prayer request to God, okay? Because God wants to meet your needs, but you have to petition God for those needs. See, you got to understand that the will of God is not automatic. If the will of God was automatic, he'd make you go to church. He'd make you pay your tithes and offers. He'd make you come to Bible study. But God wants a free will. He wants your free will to choose what he wants to do in your life, and he will move greatly. Now, we also said the benefits of having access to heaven's angels is you get supernatural protection. That's found in Psalms 9111. In Psalms 34, 7. And they also, the angels, they carry out tasks on behalf of God. We've seen a couple instances. I give you the scripture. You can look it up later. Acts chapter 5, verse 16 through 20. And Acts chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. And the angels also, they come on your behalf when you speak God's word in certain prayers. Remember when Daniel was praying to God, the angels they were on the way to manifest their prayer, giving uh, Daniel his answer. But what happened? He said he was held up by the prince of Persia. 20 days, think about that. 20 days the angel was held up because he had to fight through to get, uh, to bring Daniel the answer. Now, how do angels relate to the cross and sin? Now, we said that. In sin, you can't get the assistance of angels because while you're in sin, you can't do that. For example, if you're, say for example, you, you're not, you haven't grown up yet in, in faith and you still got some sin in your life, 
where you hinder God from moving in your life. So if you hinder God from moving in your life, you sure hinder the angels. You can't say things like, say, for example, if, if you, you're in an adulterous situation, you can't say I loose the angels in heaven being counted around about the door so our spouses won't come in and catch us. You can't say, I loose the angels to be encamped around about the bank so that the uh, police won't catch us robbing the bank in Jesus' name. That's not going to work. You have to be right with God, okay? You have to walk in truth, amen. Now, after you were born again, like I said, you were given access to God's angels. This is what's part of your benefit package, okay? Now, and that's enough for review. We're going to get into the new information for time's sake, okay? Now, what I want to teach you, teach you tonight is... Eight different types of prayers that believers should know about. Okay. Now, I can't teach on each one of them in depth, in depth, but it's going to be eight of them. But the last four we're going to talk about a little bit more. I'm just going to give you a summary of what those prayers are. Now, the first prayer is the prayer of consecration and dedication. And as we go through the prayers, I'll let you know which ones that you have uh, to use angels for. Okay. Now, the first prayer is the prayer of consecration and dedication. This is a prayer of total submission to God when believers decide to allow God to lead and guide them all the days of their life. Usually when you're first born again, you kind of do what God says, and then sometimes you do what you want to do. But after a while, you say, that's it. I'm doing everything God's way. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. And in, in Isaiah 119, it says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So your will is involved. You have to want to do God, okay? Now, so that's the prayer of consecration and dedication. Second prayer is the prayer of commitment. This is a promise of change and a challenge to the believer to commit to doing everything unto the Lord. Okay, Colossians 3, 23 says, whatever you do, you do it unto the Lord. Okay, so write down at Colossians 3, 23 and Psalm 37, 5. Now, next prayer is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is an assurance of success in prayer that encourages the believer to believe that faith accomplishes whatever it sets out to do. So you have to recognize that if I do it in faith, I'm going to get the answer. And you have to be sold out to God for that. Now, write down 1 John 5, 4 and James 5, 15. Now, just on a side note about the prayer of faith, every prayer you pray should be in faith. Not just the prayer of faith, but every prayer that you pray should be in faith. Because faith is a lifestyle for a believer. Not just something you do on Sunday when you come to church. Something that you do when you get in trouble. It's a lifestyle of faith. Amen. Okay. Our fourth prayer is the prayer of thanksgiving. The prayer of thanksgiving. The prayer of thanksgiving is an act of the believer's will, obedience, love, and appreciation for God's unconditional love, grace, mercy, and blessings that God has provided for them. Okay, I said it again. That was a mouthful. The prayer of thanksgiving, an act of the believer's will, obedience, love, and appreciation for God's unconditional love, grace, mercy, and blessing that God has provided for them. So, write down 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, and Philippians 4, 6, and 7. The prayer of thanksgiving. So you want to always give God thanks. Now, the Bible says give thanks in everything, not for everything, because everything is not from God. Some things are from the devil. Okay, but God says give thanks in everything because he's got the answer. We read that in our foundation scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He always makes a way out, whatever you get into. If God is everywhere all the time and he has the answer for everything, then you don't have any problems. You just got to remember God makes a way out with the temptation that you go through. He already knew that you was going to go through it. He already provided the answer, but you must petition God for the answer, okay? Now, let's get down to the prayers where you actually want to use the angels in, okay? Petition prayer. A petition prayer is the believer's request to God 
to meet a want, need, or desire in an act of faith, believing that God will bring it to pass. And we find that right now. Mark 11, 22 to 24. Mark 11, 22 says, and Jesus answering to them says, have faith in God. It says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe whatsoever thou sayest shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So therefore, if you doubt, you won't, it won't come to pass. You have to believe that you receive that thing that you're praying for, your want, your need, or your desire, before you ever see it because you're doing it in faith. And if you do it in faith, you have to believe that because I'm doing it in faith, then I know I got it right and I know it'll come to pass. But after you do that, I loose the angels in heaven to go forth and cause it to happen. Verse 24 says, therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So you have to believe that you're saying it. It's not about seeing it, it's about saying it. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not moved by what we see. We're moved by what we say. What we say is what we believe, and what we believe is the word of God. Amen. And in Luke, Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10, it says, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Everyone that asketh, receive it. So it's like it's automatic. You ask for God, but you have to ask for it in, long, in line with his word. That's why I said at first, find your situation in the word and pray God his word, put him in remembrance of his word, he can't do nothing but bless you, okay? If we could do it any kind of way, then we don't need the Bible, but he gave us the word. This is our instruction manual, okay? Now, the second prayer, I mean, the, uh, the uh, second prayer of where we would need angels is the prayer of agreement, the prayer of agreement. Now, the prayer of agreement is a believer being in total agreement with another believer that God will meet that believer's request as if it was their own request. So when you be in agreement with somebody, you have to really want that believer to get that need met just the same, at the same level as if it was your own request. If you was believing for a thousand dollars, if they were believing for a thousand dollars, you have to believe that they get that thousand dollars the same as if you was believing for it, okay? Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Let's look at Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20. It says, again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in, and there I am in the midst of it. So God says, I'm right there with you. I just need two of y'all to agree. But when you get somebody to agree, make sure that person is a person that will agree at the same level that you agree, that they want you to get that, okay? The Bible teaches us, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Look not only on your things of yourself, but also on the things of others, okay? So let's be in agreement with our brothers and sisters, whatever they need, okay? And 1 John chapter 5 Verses 14 and 15. Now, First John 14 and 15, it says, whenever we pray to God, he hears us. And if we believe that he hears us, then we know that we have the things that we ask for. So if we believe that God heard our prayer, then we know he's going to answer our prayer in line with his word because we believe. Now, always remember, like we've seen in Mark, you believe without doubting because if you doubt, you're going to do without. OK, and that sometimes hinders our prayers from coming. Even if you lose the angels, you can't doubt. OK. All right. Now, the third prayer that we're going to use angels with is intercessory prayer, intercessory prayer. Now, this is a powerful prayer. We use this a lot at our church. We use this every day at our church. Intercessory prayer is praying to God on behalf of others. It's also standing in the gap for others taking hold of God's will and not letting it go until it comes to pass. Most of the time, praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit is talking about praying in other tongues. Okay. The praying in other tongues, the Bible teaches us that's the perfect prayer. 
Now, let's turn to Romans chapter 15. I want you to see something. Romans chapter 15, verse 1. Romans 15, verse 1. And it says, it says, when we that are strong, we then, excuse me, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Once again, looking on behalf of other people, that's intercession, praying, standing in, the, standing in the gap, looking out for other people, okay? Sometimes you're a little bit more mature than other people, so you don't look at them as they're being dumb. You look at it as, as somebody I can help. I can help and bring them up to the next level, amen? And Ezekiel 22.30. Let's look at Ezekiel 22.30. Beautiful example of standing in the gap. God looks for people to stand in the gap. Ezekiel 22.30 says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So you have to stand in the gap on behalf of those that are married, your spouse, your kids. Sometimes we have kids who are just not following the word of God. You got to stand in the gap for them. Don't just tell them to just, just get away from me. You have to stand in the gap for your children. Stand in the gap for your family members. Stand in the gap for your church family members. Stand in the gap for your pastor. Stand in the gap is part of a believer's makeup, okay? Now, and our last prayer that we want to use angels in is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is prayer that takes place in the spiritual world where the battles for our own life, our families, our friends, and our nation are won. Once again, prayer that takes place in the spiritual world where the battles of our, for our own life, our families, our friends, and our nation are won. Uh, spiritual warfare is also the spiritual battle against spiritual wickedness in the spirit realm. Okay, let's look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. We're in spiritual warfare. We got to be serious about this. We need every single thing that we need to do on our behalf and God to take care of the rest. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, Finally, then, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we're doing it in the strength of the Lord. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 is the operative verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So people are not your problem. It says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we haven't problems with these demonic spirits that's who our problem is now the only problem is they work through people so it makes us think that the people that we see are the problem but it's the demons that's working through them see a lot of times when the demons working through people they don't realize that a demon spirit is working through them because the devil has access to your mind and he throws them neg negative thoughts wicked thoughts to you and if you carry them out it looks like it's your problem, but it's not you. It's the devil working through you. So when the devil works through people, we have to take in consideration that I need to pray for that person. Not hit them upside with a bat, because that doesn't help. All that does is cause problems. And that's what the devil wants you to do. Kill them, shoot them, hit them upside the head, and then he gets you in jail. Now he sits back and laughs. I fooled another one. I fooled another. When you look at the 10 o'clock news and hear about the shootings and the robberies, all that is is advertising who the devil tricked this time, who the devil tricked that time. The devil tricked this person to kill somebody. The devil tricked this person to rob a bank, okay? Now, let's look at, uh, well, let me, let me finish. It says, verse 12 again, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, it says, Wherefore, take to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil, the wiles of the tricks and devices of the devil, okay? And it goes on in verse 18. You continue to read on your own. Now, let's look at our next scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 
And it kind of kind of backs up 1 Corinthians here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we drop down to verse 3. It says, For we for, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we don't get the pistol out. We don't get the knife out. We don't get the bat out. It says, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, in verse 5, it says, casting down imagination. The devil gives you thoughts. He gives you images, making you try to respond to that. But you have to recognize that wasn't God, that was of the devil. So you cast it down. So when the devil gives you a bad thought, you say, I cast down that imagination. I rebuke that thought in Jesus' name. You know, you cover the person that you're praying for. I lose the angels to go forth and cause whatever you're praying for to, have, to come to pass. Sometimes you can lose the angels to go forth and minister to them. When you're having a problem at work, your boss acting up, Father, I just lift up my boss, I lift up Mr. Johnson, and I lose the angels in heaven to go forth and minister to him in Jesus' name. You know, you have to stand in the gap for the person because they don't understand that the devil's working through them. But when you have that spiritual knowledge that you recognize you in spiritual warfare, then you intercede for them, praying in tongues, and you loose the angels to go forth and minister to them on your behalf. And God will take care of that, okay? Now, I like the one about Daniel. Just try to think about Daniel when the angel was helped up for 20 days. That's a long time, 20 days. That's over half a month. Daniel prayed, was waiting for the answer, and the answer was held up by the prince of Persia. That was a fallen angel that was holding up Daniel, trying to prevent him to get that answer. And on behalf of that, then sometimes it's delayed. And during that delay, you still have to confess. I thank you, Father. I believe I have it. Thank you, Father, for the victory in that situation, okay? And as long as you have loosed the angels to go forth and cause it to happen, you continue to confess to continue to thank God for the answer and the answer will manifest, okay? So, now, Holy Spirit gave me a revelation when I was looking at that. And since we see that the devil will try to hold up the answer, what you can do is when you pray for something, say this, I loose the angels in heaven to go forth and cause it to happen outnumbering the demon spirits in strength, power, and number in Jesus' name. Because that prince of Persia held up Daniel's prayer for 20 days. Now, I also begin to look up this one thing because I remember Jesus said he could, he could call for a legion of angels. So I looked at what was legion. Well, in Romans times, they used legion, a legion of men. These were elite men, elite fighters, and it was 6,000. So how about this? When you're praying for something, whether it's great or whether it's small, ask for a legion of angels. I'll lose the legions of angels, go forth and cause it to happen. So those legions of angels will be elite angels that will outnumber the demons that will try to hell it up in strength, power, and numbers. And your prayer may even come even faster, okay? So therefore, we have to use the angels at the proper prayer. So that would be in petition prayer, when you believe in God for something, Prayer of agreement, you being in agreement with another believer, you loosen the angels to go forth and cause it to happen because once again, that person is in petition to God for something. In accessory prayer, when it's a group of us, like a church group or just a group of people interceding for something on behalf of uh, whatever that need or want or desire is. And it's definitely in spiritual warfare because we already see the angels will fight other angels because the devil don't want that prayer to come to pass because he don't want you to believe that the word works when you work the word, okay? So therefore, remember, loose those angels when you have those petitions to God. Once again, those prayers were petition prayer, prayer of agreement, intercessory prayer, and spiritual warfare. Now the other prayers that we mentioned at first, the prayer of consecration and dedication, that's you praying to God. Prayer of a commitment, once again, that's you committing yourself to God. And the prayer of faith, that's like a revelation of assurance of success in prayer that encourages the believer to believe that faith accomplishes. So that's like a principle that you put in your portfolio that lets you know, if I'm doing this in faith, 
then it's going to come to pass because Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the other one, prayer of thanksgiving. You just showing God you appreciate all that he's done for you because God got things for you. He's been doing things for you in the past, things that he's done in the past, things that he's doing in your present and things that he has provided for you in the future. OK, so praise God. That's all I have this evening. Thanks again for coming, tuning in. And I don't don't want to count it as you have uh, everybody's automatically saved. So I want to pray this prayer of salvation, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. So I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the son of God. He died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification and I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word, Father, that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give them to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me, lead me, guide me, anoint me, empower me, and direct my life so I may live for God. Reveal to me God's plan and purpose for my life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for filling me with Holy Spirit. We believe if you prayed that prayer, you are now born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we want you to call the number on the bottom of the screen, 314 314- 867-1894 and let us know that you prayed that prayer for the first time and we are sending you some materials. Okay? And if this message has been a blessing to you, we want you to sow your gift of love and thanksgiving to, to the ministry. Once again, you can call that number, 314-867-1894 or you can go to the website g well, www.g2 the number 2 gcc.org and you can sow your gifts of love to that okay now i want to pray a prayer of benediction over you and once again thank you for coming in thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time father we just thank you and praise you for your word thank you father for what you have imparted to our hearts father we thank you for that wisdom and knowledge father that we can take a hold to and use father and we can petition you for these things that we want need and desire and we'll do it the right way father we trust and believe father that your word is true and that it will come to pass if we do it according to your word and your will in jesus name once again father we give you praise honor and glory for all you've done things you're doing things you're going to do thank you father for those that tuned in and i pray father that you pour your blessings into their life father i pray father that today is the first day of the rest of their life, of the best days of the rest of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.